Hey guys, my name is Chris and I'm a Surgical Service Registrar in Paediatric Surgery and today I wanted to talk to you about how to take world-class training techniques and apply them to the process of learning to operate in the operating theatre. A couple of years ago, I was recommended a book called The Art of Learning by Josh Waitzkin. Now, Josh is an incredible guy. He started off as a chess prodigy and was the subject of the film The Search for Bobby Fischer, and he became a world champion in chess multiple times over. And then he decided to pursue Tai Chi, and he became a world champion in that field as well. And then finally, he pursued Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and became one of the first black belts under nine time world champion Marcelo Garcia, largely considered one of the greatest grapplers of this generation. And so he wrote a book about the techniques that he used to master all of these three disciplines and about how it can be applied more broadly to any pursuit of excellence. And so today I wanted to talk about those principles and about how they apply to the pursuit of surgery. The first principle is that learning is a process of incrementality, not an absolute that people aren't born being excellent at one thing and terrible at another, but rather that the process of mastery is gradual and that through incremental improvements, you can move from novice to master in any discipline that you choose to pursue. Partnered with this principle is the second principle of having a beginner's mind, being willing to invest in failure, or as Josh puts it, invest in loss. And that is understanding that when you start something, you're going to be bad at it and that you're going to embarrass yourself while you're doing it. And that only by moving through those stages of being bad and performing those actions and improving upon them in an incremental way, are you going to be able to pursue the mastery that you seek. The third point is approaching a task from a deconstructive standpoint, taking complexity and breaking it down into its component pieces and then focusing on those individual components to achieve mastery of the whole. The final stage of that process is called slowing down time. And he talks about how once you have refined the core components of a complex task into their most pure forms and you can do them without even thinking about them, you free up your mental capacity to deal with complexity and uncertainty because the basics and the fundamentals are so within your mastery at that stage. These principles are abstract though, and they don't account for the differences between being a professional athlete and being a surgical trainee. And there's two key differences. The first is that when you're a surgical trainee, there's variance. You don't always know when you're going to be able to rehearse a particular skill. You don't know who's going to come through the emergency room next or what sort of operation you might be called upon to do. The second issue is that time is limited when you're practicing or developing a skill. An operating theatre doesn't always run to your training schedule. There's a lot of other demands on its time and so you have to try and find a way of applying these principles in a realistic fashion given those limitations. And so that's what I've tried to do and I want to step you through it with a real life example. So let's take a basic operation, a laparoscopic appendicectomy. And to use a deconstructionalist approach, we're going to break it down into its key components. So that would be incision and hassan entry, placement of ports, inspection of the intra-abdominal cavity, mobilization of the appendix, dissection of the meso-appendix, placement of the endo-loops, and then inspection of the intra-abdominal cavity plus or minus washout, removal of the appendix via the endo-catch, removal of the port sites, and closure. The next step is going to be internalizing each point or each component of the operation. So if I can't practice those components externally, I'm still going to visualize going through those steps before I even step forward uh, into the operating theater. So as I go through each of the stages of the laparoscopic appendicectomy, I'm going to have a very clear idea in my head of exactly what physical movements I'm going to be taking, what instruments I'm going to require, what potential complications or issues each one of those steps might present and how I would respond in a branching manner to each of those issues. And then the physicality of the action itself and what sort of movements I'm going to be making, how I want those movements to feel, and then how I want the operation to proceed in terms of time and how long each of those steps are going to take in order to achieve that. And once I have that clear vision in my head of each of the component parts, as well as exactly how they're going to look in real life, that's when it's time to start practicing those individual component parts within the operating theatre, but not all together and not all at once. Using the principle 
of investing in failure as well as a beginner's mindset. I'm going to approach each time I'm an assistant in one of those operations as I'm training for the laparoscopic appendicectomy as an opportunity to rehearse one of those skills or components that I've visualized in the past. So it might be the Hassan entry. And when the opportunity presents itself, I might talk to the person who I was operating with as a resident and say, I feel like I have a good understanding. This is what I would do in this situation. This is how I would like to perform the technique and then have the opportunity to demonstrate that skill and to rehearse that skill in the operating theatre, but then not to do the rest of the operation myself. And then it might be that I feel comfortable with that part of the procedure and I'd like to practice a different component, which is the mobilisation of the appendix. And again, at a different setting, I would take the opportunity to explain the procedure and the process of that component skill and request if I had the opportunity to practice it as well. And step by step, each instance of a laparoscopic appendicectomy that I could take part in becomes an opportunity to rehearse an individual component skill so that I'm progressively making smaller circles, as Josh would say, and making each of the actions and the components more elegant and more natural. Then when it comes to putting all of the pieces together, you've already practiced the individual components a number of times. So it might be that while you're doing the operation by yourself as the primary surgeon for the first time. In fact, all of the components of the operation you've done 10, 15, 20 times before. And what that does is free up headspace so that even though you might be doing something by yourself and that in itself might be stressful, all of the technical components of the procedure are not stressful to you anymore. So to draw a contrast, imagine for a moment that you're pursuing surgical training as a junior doctor and you're waiting for the opportunity to do a procedure for the first time and even though you've assisted and hold, held the camera for a laparoscopic appendicectomy many times, you've never done any of the individual components of the procedure and when it gets to a stage where you're senior enough that you're invited to do one for yourself, you have to admit that you haven't really done any before and your learning curve is much slower. To contrast that against the person who's applied these principles that Josh is talking about in his book, the first time you're invited to move from the camera to be the primary surgeon, you already have the experience of having done all of the individual components of the operation many, many times before. And so not only will you look a lot more slick in that position, but you're gonna get a lot more out of that training opportunity than the person who hasn't taken advantage of this deconstructionalist uh, approach. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to optimize an approach to surgical training. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, then subscribe below, click the like button, uh, and let me know what you think about how you approach training and how you approach learning new skills and a new operation in the comments below, because it'd be great to hear your voice about what you think works and what you think doesn't work.